Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Taryn Urquhart, and I'm the Arts and Special Events Programmer here at the West Vancouver Memorial Library. On behalf of the library and the West Vancouver Art Museum, I would like to welcome you to tonight's Art Talk. While I recognize that we are all in different places this evening, I would like to acknowledge that the West Vancouver Library and Art Museum reside within the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Squamish Nation, Tsleil-Waututh Nation, and Musqueam Nation. We recognize and respect them as nations in this territory, as well as the historic connection to the lands and waters around us since time immemorial. I am personally grateful to call the Pacific Northwest my home, and I'm thankful to the Coast Salish communities that continue to protect the natural beauty and animal diversity that surround me every day. It has been my great pleasure to work with Hilary Letwin and her guests tonight to bring this event to your screens. And now I would like to pass things over to Hilary, who is waiting over at the museum. Hilary? Thank you, Taryn, and thank you to all of you for joining us this evening. We're delighted to be here at the Art Museum speaking about our current exhibition, which is called Order from Chaos and features the work of two artists, uh, BC Binning and Jane Adams. And I'm joined tonight by Jane Adams, who's going to tell us a little bit about her work and her life. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm delighted to be here with you, Jane, and it's been such a pleasure to work with you on this project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's, it's come together beautifully, and it's always interesting um, to, to chart how our project comes together. And uh, just for a, a bit of background for our audience, uh, Jane and I have been working on this project for about two years. Uh, and um, it's it's been uh, very exciting to um, be able to work with an artist who has a very uh, important historic role in our community here in West Vancouver. And, and of course, I'm speaking about, about Bert Binning, BC Binning. Uh, Bert uh, and his wife, Jessie, built what is often called the first modern home in Western Canada here in West Vancouver in 1941. Uh, and this home, which still stands today, holds a very special place in our community. It's, it's a national historic uh, landmark. Uh, and um, and this house served as an epicenter of arts and culture in West Vancouver for, for a number of decades. Uh, and um, Jane, it's been really wonderful to work with you to, to really examine uh, the impact of, of Bert, not just on your life, but on the life of many artists and architects and designers. Uh, so um, we'll we'll get to that. We'll we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we do, I'd like to start by talking a little bit about your career. Uh, I wonder if you can tell us um, how you became a painter, how you became an artist. Yeah. Um, well, I was very young. I was I'm eleven, and my mother won a scholarship. I think in those days it was called a royal. Cons uh, Royal Conservatory Scholarship. It was the precursor to the Canada Council. So she was awarded some money to go and live in France for a year and write an opera based on the return of the native, which she did. And the question was what to do with me. So I went to, uh, I went to uh, join her in London after the summer, after school was out and we ended up living together in Paris for about six months and then later in the south of France. But it was in the in the months that we lived in Paris that I met a woman by the name, a sculptor by the name of Frances Gage who came from Toronto. And she was a marvelous teacher. And we ended up going together to the Louvre and all various art galleries and painting and sketching. And, and then uh, I was put in school. So it sort of hindered that for a while. But uh, that's where it began. And then later on, uh, I had a great friend. He died just last year, Michael Morris. He won the Governor General's Award, I believe, some years ago for his painting. And we went off to London together to the Slade. And he was uh, a great friend and mentor. And we just about went everywhere. I was enrolled in another class at a, a school for design and he was working on a Canada Council. But we ended up going to some amazing events, including a David Hockney opening. I think it was David Hockney's first opening. I can't remember, but I think it was the Marlborough Gallery. 
and he was a, he had this blonde hair and he had a gold suit on and it was his men in the shower series and it was so exciting for us and we had a wonderful time so all of that sort of input got me into seriously painting and uh, later on it was the Chelsea Art School uh, that I went to and then the Va Vancouver Art School now Emily Carr so that was the beginning Yes. Yes. So that, and that those early uh, experiences traveling with your mother living abroad, yeah. those were very impactful and, very. and being exposed to the, the yeah. museums like the Louvre. Um, and, and just to uh, back up uh, for those of, of our audience who aren't familiar, um, can you give us a quick introduction to your mother and tell us who she was? Yeah. Yes. Her, her name is Jean Colthard and she died in 2000. But she was really a, you could say, a Canadian pioneer of contemporary music. And her music is played regularly. Tom Allen plays it quite a bit on the CBC. I'm always overjoyed to hear something. And uh, recently, her prayer for Elizabeth was played at the CBC special on the funeral that day. Um, so she's quite well known, or say she's very well known in music circles. But it was an interesting uh, mother to have. We worked together on many projects. I actually did the designs for her cost of the costuming for the Return of the Native, and those paintings hang, I believe, in the Canadian M Music Center here. And we worked together on some other projects for children through the uh, Music Center. Yeah, so so some wonderful. wonderful collaborations and and your parents were both very involved in what we could call the sort of modern scene in Vancouver yeah, in the 50s in the early and 60s days. yeah so why don't you tell us your father was also a, a yeah a, a he uh, he imported Danish furniture to Vancouver he had a store called Don Adams Interiors and anybody of a certain age would remember that store and I think a lot of what he sold uh, by some famous uh, designers in Denmark at the time, like Finn Yule and Arne Jakobsen and various people like that. Uh, they've been recycled, I think, in Vancouver. <laughs> so you can buy them on the second time around. But my father always said that they would be the antique of the future. And he was so true. It was, it so, was so right. <laughs> How <Yeah>. prescient. <laughs> yeah. Now and and I'd love to speak a little bit about their kind of extended circle. Uh, one of the the things um, that we wanted to bring out in this project was the connections between you and Bert Binning, of course, separated by a generation or two. Um, and for those of us who aren't familiar with, with Bert States, he was born in 1909 and passed away in 1976, um, but was survived by his wife. Jesse, who lived to be 101, and she, of course, lived here in West Vancouver in their home. Yes. So maybe, Jane, you can elaborate a little bit on the relationship that your parents had with the Binnings. Uh, well, I think back in the four, 1940s and early 50s, Vancouver being so small, most artists, composers, poets, architects, they all knew each other. And Bert was very much Bert uh, Binning and Molly Bobak and uh, Jack Shadwold. They were all very close and quite fr friendly with each other. And uh, I remember as a child, Bert coming to the house in the, the exhibition at the museum is a picture, uh, a line drawing that Bert did of my mother sitting at her piano. I have a memory of him coming and we lived on Wiltshire Street in Carisdale in those days. And my mother had a music room, which was quite beautiful. And he came in and I remember him drawing. I have a vague memory. There maybe have been several drawings, but I wouldn't know where they went. But the one that I we kept is in, in the museum. But um, I didn't really know him. Uh, I was too young. And then I went to Montreal for many years, 22 years, I was there. And Jesse and mother remained friends after Bert's death. And in uh, 1990, when I returned, Jesse and I became good friends through my mother. And I love going to her house. And a lot of my inspiration for my paintings started there in the, 
seeing all his his her house was a, a small museum of his work so i got to see just about everything that was coming in or going out at that in those years during that decade of the 90s yes i, I think jesse was really uh um it, it was very important to her. She really prioritized uh, making sure that Bert's legacy she, lived on and, and she made sure that donations were made to a lot of local collections uh, and, um, and, and really sort of maintained the impact that he had because he, he taught a number of architects how to draw, including Ron yeah. Tom and Arthur Erickson. And um, he was responsible for bringing Richard Neutra up from California to talk about uh, the international style, the modern style of architecture. So certainly um, there was uh, a, a huge impact that Bert had on the, on the architectural scene and the artistic scene in Vancouver um, before his, his passing. Uh, and Jesse was committed to that legacy. So uh, I, I love hearing stories about you going into their house um, and, and seeing his work and seeing his studio. Mm -hmm. And I think you lived in West Vancouver when you moved back from yeah. Montreal. We, we lived in one side of Sentinel Hill. So we were all quite close. Jesse would come over, swim in our little pool in the summer. And yeah, I saw his studio. His studio is, is probably still there up in the back garden. But at that time, she had some of his paintings in there as well, mm -hmm. I guess, before they were given away to museums and so forth. So, uh, but the mainstay in the house was the mural at the end of the hall, which had a big impact on me, which I have put two into the exhibition uh, that, that really I loved. I loved to, I borrowed actually, his idea of little squares and what went on inside the, the squares in terms of home and comfort and, that was at the end of the hall in the house. And I think there was a very large one going down the hall, up on the wall. And I believe that same painting was in the hard edge painting show recently at the gallery. It's a great big blue. At the, at the Vancouver Art Gallery. Yeah, wonderful yes. pale blue background. And, and that was in certainly in that show. Yeah, and it was in the house back then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we we've spoken a bit about about Bert's influence on your work. Uh, would I think it would be nice to talk about some of the other influences that you've had in your artistic career? Because yeah. it's not just Bert. <laughs> um, and I think one of the interesting things about about this project and and similar projects is that we're sort of acknowledging that artists don't they don't operate in a vacuum. There are always influences and, and, and they don't even have to be direct influences. They can be no. indirect yeah. Yeah. and they can be networks of people sort of working together to, to make you the artist that you are. So I'd love to hear a little bit more. You mentioned Michael Morris. I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, some of the other artists uh, that you uh, that you cherish as, as influences in, in your artistic work? Well, way back when we left art school, uh, we were all painting abstractly, you know, and then I changed and was quite uh, realism. I was into realism for many years. But in the beginning of my career, um, I loved an English painter, Victor Passmore. He was a big influence at the time. And of course, Miro and Chagall, as I think back, and uh, Kandinsky. Uh, we all kind of emulated and tried to in our way at that time, or certainly I did try to instill some of their ideas into my own work. And uh, then in middle life, I guess, in my mid career, um, I had a very influenced by. Uh, Hockney, after I'd seen that first exhibition in London and his paper pool series. I just adored that series of his in his career. And uh, who else? Um, let me look here. Who I got? Joseph Raphael. He was a Northern California painter who was brilliant with watercolor. And at that time, I was doing a lot of watercolors and he did koi and ponds and 
And I can only think that our own Gordon Smith may have seen ponds and done by Man Monet or so who knows. And then so, and recent more recently, when I uh, changed over to abstract painting in about 2015, 16, I found a book in the Vancouver uh, in the art gallery about Sarah Crowner. And she's an extraordinary woman. I think she's about 50 now. And she 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 does sails, wonderful floating flat colors that she stitches onto canvases. And I was intrigued by her her work. And I think I probably have incorporated some ideas from her into my more recent work. And of course, uh, well, Shadbolt. Mm -hmm. We were good friends for many years. And even after school, I finished art school. I went back. After I'd moved to Montreal, I went back. And I took my little baby girl with me. And Doris took care of the child. And we Jack and I would talk for a long time. He was a wonderful influence. So, uh, And Roy Cayuca, in his classes, we used to sit on, well, he would sit on a stool and he would read poetry to us and we would paint his poetry. And that was, uh, I remember one, I was an American poet and it went chickens, fill, chickens in a wheelbarrow filled with rainwater. So we were all painting kind of rainy. Anyway, he, he evoked some wonderful ideas for his students. And, uh, Ellsworth Kelly, oh. I love his work, and I still do. And I often look at his work. You, and you've one said, more, oh, a Canadian, Millie Ritzvit, and she oh. came to the opening of the exhibition at your gallery, and she's a wonderful Ontario painter, and we've been friends since art school. So, so, so a really full and rich and varied list of artists that, that you would count as influences. And uh, I, I think you had previously remarked on how you don't, your influences, you, you sort of take your influences in, I, I would think a fairly um, typical way for artists. You're not copying anybody. It's not a direct reference to anybody's work, but it's, a very sort of gentle presence in your work. And maybe so. you can elaborate on that. I think visual people see visually and then they orchestrate it their own way. Yeah, I think that's a, a beautiful way to express it. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the work that we feature in this exhibition. And one can see an example of, of um, the work that we've included behind me. Uh, and, um, and of course, one of your more recent works behind you as well. Uh, so this sort of style of work you started doing in 2015, roughly, and you've told me previously that you came across the Douglas and McIntyre 2006 publication about BC Binning and his work, and that that was uh, an important moment for you. So do you want to talk a little bit more about this current style in which you work and that you've been working in for about well, just under 10 years, I guess. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about this, yeah. this current body of work. Well, we, my husband and I made a move to the city uh, in 2016. We're in Kitsilano and it was quite a change downsizing as they call it. So we moved, uh, I had a large studio in West Vancouver where I taught and it was wonderful, but I've taken a studio now on Granville Island. But the, the point is moving to the city, it was suddenly we were bombarded with sounds that I'd never heard before. The binners going up and down the lane at night and the rattle of bottles and the seagulls and the planes coming in over the harbor below and, uh, all of this and the roofers next door, they were doing a house. So everything began to kind of, it was a cacophony of this, this huge city life that blew in on me. And I began painting that and that transformed, I think with the early years of 
the isolation and COVID, and it became days passing. A lot of this series behind me and you are about days passing, not much to look forward to, quiet, calendar. Uh, there's a some in your exhibition of hourglass dripping away. And so a lot of it, I think, formulated out of what we were living during those two and a half years. And we're coming out of it slowly. And I'm thinking about what's next now. Um, we'll see what appears. But certainly the majority of the paintings in the exhibition are to do with those months of moving to the city and then the onslaught of the uh, the uh, pandemic and so forth. Yeah. And, and it was a really exciting prospect working with you to, to pick which of your works we were including in the exhibition. And I'll just touch on our process uh, for our viewers. Uh, we here at the Art Museum have 21 works of art that were donated by Jesse Binning's estate uh, after she passed. Uh, and uh, those were all works by BC Binning and they ranged uh, from paintings to prints, to works on paper, drawings, primarily pen and ink drawings. And so we had this selection of work by BC Binning that we wanted to include in this exhibition. And in the end, we've um, included 12 works by Binning. Uh, and having that list of works, we then went into Jane's studio uh, and selected work that that sort of on a compositional or formal level responded very strongly to the binning work that we had access to. Uh, and so you can see behind me a pairing of one of Jane's paintings with uh, a mosaic um, that was done, uh, that was designed by binning, um, actually from the now demolished CKWX radio station that was salvaged. Um, the uh, mosaic is made of Venetian glass tesserae, uh, and it's in a, a two-tone blue pattern, a geometric pattern. And, and so throughout the exhibition, we've hung Jane's work next to work by B.C. Binning uh, and uh, tried to highlight these really interesting relationships between the two artists. And it's not hung in a chronological way. Jane, as you've indicated, a lot of your work is, is recent work created from sort of 2019 forward. Uh, and um, so it's not hung chronologically, um, but we're using the sort of the work of the two artists hung together to tell the, the story of, of both of you, both you and, and BC Binning. And I think it works uh, extremely well. It's a very bright and pleasing exhibition. It's perfect for this time of year, uh, I think. And, and um, the relationships are great. Um, Jane, we're getting a lot of questions from visitors about your process. So I would love to have you um, tell us a little bit about some of the materials that you, you use and whether or not you work from a design or a drawing, or if you just go right into the painting. So please tell us more about your artistic process for these yeah. works. I do go right into the painting, actually. I don't plan anything, really. I, I have an idea for a form and I make a stencil usually or several stencils. And then I, uh, I use acrylic paints, uh, golden mostly, and I do a background. I have a background already put on and dried and ready to go. And then I use a stencil and trace over ideas of movement. And I think a lot of them like the one behind me had to do with after the move, there was, I have several canvases that have this kind of bridge work quality behind. And the bridge work, I think, as I think back is the Lionsgate bridge. It was going back and forth all the time and seeing friends and all that. But um, so I then I, I do these, I fill in with color on top of the original background. And then I use repeatograph pen where I carefully map out what the movement is doing 
and some of it is painted over and some is painted around or between. And then because the repeatograph would move uh, when I glaze it, I spray it and solidify it, make it permanent. And then I glaze over with several layers of acrylic glaze that stabilizes it forever. It's that's about it. Yeah, yeah. it's um, uh, there. There's a particularly nice passage in the exhibition that I really love, where we have uh, one of your works, one of your two works on paper in the exhibition, yeah. interior mural, which is inspired, according to the title, uh, by the mural work at the Binning Home. Uh, and we have that work hanging next to two works on paper by Binning, both of which show boats. Uh, one of them um, has uh, a fishing boat with this incredible netting, which in my mind works so beautifully with the, um, the sort of grid lines that you have in your in your drawing. So you're looking at both of them together and you get these incredible graphic lines. I use, which... mo I use mosaic. I have used mosaic such as uh, behind you, the Bert binning on the left of you, on the right of you, left of us. I use mosaic all my life, right from the beginning. And I don't know how that happened, but in 1974, my mother um, had a, a, a commission uh, through the Vancouver, through, through China, actually, it came from China to do a, a, a orchestral piece based on folk, the folk songs of Canada, the different provinces, and it was called Canada Mosaic, and it did not go to China. There had uh, been a situation; I don't know what happened, but it did go to Japan in 1974. Uh, our conductor then, and I can't pull his name up, Akiyama. Anyway, it went and but it, all all the years after that, I kept with the mosaic. And in any uh, uh, so in some of the hospitals here, I have work, and a lot of those that are in the hospital have the mosaic patterns in them. This behind you, the mosaic got a little bit stretched in other directions, but it's still there underneath. Mm -hmm. And you, I was uh, quite amazed to see you picked that one out to go with the Bert, and it's so right. Thanks. It 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 does work beautifully. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's always gratifying when a plan that we've formulated in your studio, <laughs> when we get get into the actual yeah. space here at the art museum, and and very thankfully it works. <laughs> so it's uh, it's wonderful. Um, so before we close, I would just like to to speak very briefly about what does come next for you. Yeah. Uh, you, you've been working um, with this body of work now for, for almost a decade. And uh, do you see yourself staying with this or do you see yourself going I mean, in a different I direction? I will stay with the, the abstraction and I have a few ideas that keep popping in and out. I think probably next week I'll get back into the studio. It's harder in the summer to get into the <laughs> studio, but I'll go and figure out something new. And, and you're quite disciplined about going to the studio, I think. I remember Gordon Smith saying that that he needs to go in every day and work like a gardener. And I think that you're probably of that ilk as well. I think so. I think the longer you leave not going to the studio, the ideas kind of evaporate. And then it's harder. You know, the artist who has to fa face the blank canvas or the blank paper when you're working, one thing leads immediately into another and you need to get to that space where, you're, where your thoughts are always changing and collecting new ideas. You know, one uh, punctuation that you put, you'll, you'll see it appearing in the next painting because it worked in that one and you see it working in another way in a, in a newer painting. So I think that's how the process develops, yeah. It's wonderful to gain some insight into your process. Uh, Jane, it's been such a pleasure meeting with you this afternoon and, and, and speaking about your work. Uh, thank you very much for, for meeting with us today. And uh, we are delighted to have our visitors come in uh, until the exhibition closes on September 23rd. 
Uh, we have produced a publication for this project as we do for most of our projects and it's available here for purchase at the art museum for $20. Uh, and there is an essay by me, uh, mostly about Bert Binning's life and an essay by Jane about her life and work. Uh, and uh, we would encourage you to come in and see the exhibition. So thank you, Jane, and thank you to our thank you, viewers for joining us. Thank you.